Thank you, Arpet, and hello to every, everyone. Let me share my screen. Um, okay. Okay, Next Generation Mobile Networks Alliance. Um, we are an operator-driven um, organization. We have um, a bit more than 80 companies at the moment in NGMN. We are growing and we um, embrace the entire value chain, and as you can see from our um, partner and membership slide here, um, starting from research institutes, um, but also, of course, embracing vendors and uh, mobile network operators, system integrators and the like. We focus mainly on three um, areas. The first one is mastering the route to disaggregation with a specific focus on the end-to-end -end operating model of disaggregated networks. The second uh, big topic is green future networks, so everything around sustainability. And the third big topic of NGMN, as our name suggests, is 6G. Um, and uh, in addition, we still support the uh, full implementation of 5G uh, with a number of projects. So I would like to jump quickly into the different uh, focus topics uh, we have in our work program and explain what the scope of this work is and um, of course also how this relates uh, to the topic we have today um, here in the, in the conference. So operating disaggregated networks, uh, we delivered um, a first publication last year. It's um, about the context, the current challenges and needs observed by operators. Um, so with the disaggregation of networks, it is clear that um, the operating model has to be adjusted and um, operators need to understand also the level of disruption it takes uh, with regards to their processes, with regards to their skills, but also with regards to technology, technical skills, um, te technical tools. Um, so currently the project works on the industry status and roadmap. Um, it will also uh, work on the target picture delivered by disaggregation. It will consider the relationship with specific industry verticals. Um, it will um, deliver operating model blueprints, uh, looking at the different options, pros and cons, and main decision points to so helping operators to make their own decisions. Naturally, as an alliance, we work uh, in the pre-competitive environment. And it will also consider the role and impact of disaggregated network testing because it has, of course, also impact on test and integration. And the project will submit requirements to the industry. And uh, one example is uh, the Camara Alliance. I think we will um, come to this in more detail a bit later uh, in the session. About 6G, so 6G, we delivered the first uh, driver's ambition um, publication last year and just beginning of this year, um, the first publication on use cases, uh, use cases and analysis. And we started now with the entire partnership in NGMN to work on the end-to-end -end system requirements for 6G. Um, naturally, the standardization will start later. We are early stage for 6G, but it is very important to start right now considering the technology cycles. Green Future Networks, so in 2021, uh, we delivered uh, several um, publications. One important one was on network energy efficiency, but also we had a very uh, detailed uh, work on um, network equipment eco-design and also um, um, considered how to develop methods um, for an end-to-end -end services footprint um, measurement. Um, we delivered also a generic um, overview on sustainability challenges and initiatives in mobile networks. And last but not least, um, um, considerations and requirements about metering for sustainable networks. In 2022 now, uh, we started uh, with four new topics. So one is um, semi-new because it is the continuation of the network energy efficiency uh, work we have done in 21. Um, so it's continuing uh, this year and it is also embracing uh, topics like um, energy efficiency means through artificial intelligence. Um, and it will also look on the network energy efficiency of disaggregated networks. Um, we have a general uh, work group about um, reduction of environmental impact. This includes um, the view on critical materials, so the reduction 
of critical materials usage, um, any impact on water footprint, but also again the eco design of of our products. And the two um, um, big topics um, in addition are supply chain circular economy criteria for uh, procurement leaders, and uh, we work on uh, developing an industry standard for a global green networks benchmark. So this will um, include uh, methodologies, KPIs, um, and also consider this, the data sources for such a benchmark. Um, so those are the main topics uh, we have at the moment. It's not the full work program, but uh, because uh, we have not uh, too much time today, I uh, stop here and hand over to Henry. Thank you, Henry. Uh, your introduction, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Anita and, and everyone. I'm just going to share my screen. Hopefully people can actually see that now. Uh, welcome everyone. Um, I'm Henry Calvert, has been uh, at head of the GISMA. Um, so the GSMA, um, we're almost like the grandfather of, uh, of uh, associations. Uh, certainly in the mobile industry, we're founded in 1987. And we have over um, a thousand members, um, not only operator, mobile operator network companies, there's about 750. Uh, but also ecosystem uh, players and partners uh, like NGMM and, and, and the Linux Foundation. Um, so we have uh, around about 400 of, of uh, those sort of things. We, we sort of focus on, on uh, we're a very large organization and, and, and lots of activities and we've got four, three main focus areas. Uh, connectivity for good, which is really where policy and regulation actually comes from. It also does charitable uh, actions for developing markets through our mobile for development, um, which is supported by grant funding. But mainly we focus on governments uh, and the education of regulation and the impact of those regulation in the industry. Then we have industry services and solutions, which is one of the hearts of uh, the GSMA. And that's really our technology angle. That's how do we ensure it, that uh, but everything that is uh, actually produced, innovated by the likes of 3GPP, we're even led by NGNMN, um, who actually came out with the first 5G uh, white paper. You see they're working on the 6G. We sort of look at how do we commercially bring that to the marketplace and, and make everything uh, hopefully work and fix in the mobile industry. And then we have our outreach, um, which is the Mobile World Congresses in Barcelona, Shanghai, and now Las Vegas. Um, so they're the three major um, uh, uh, trade association events that we have across the years. Just in the technology area that we actually have, and, and it's such, it is such a large scope of everything that we actually do. So I'm just going to focus down on, on a few things. Um, but in the technology working groups, which is usually the establishments of how things work in the industry, how things are actually interoperable, how, you know, for example, like roaming, how roaming works, uh, how things actually uh, connect together. There are eight key working groups that we focus on. But as the networks are changing uh, and the practices are changing, um, we've decided to start to create two groups. One focused on IoT and the next focused on cloud networks, which we've been working on for some time. So I just want to give a little bit more detail uh, in that and how we've been working through cloud networks. Uh, in the GSMA, um, we've been looking at how these cloud networks are going to actually sort of support and change the industry that we actually have. We more, more have a stack-based, software stack-based approach to how we're looking at architectures and defining specifications that hopefully are going to employ the standardization and the ideas that are coming from uh, other, other collaborative and SDO activities. We have three main activity groups that we've been doing. Um, for the last three, four years, we've actually had the Open Infrastructure Task Force that's been working with the Linux Foundation on ACNET um, that uh, actually looks at what is the store and compute models that we need to deploy in operators and operators deploy in enterprises so people can actually provide their software stacks, so their virtualization, containerization. Um, so it's all, all profiled correctly and understood by everyone. Then we have the operator platform, which is trying to sort of um, uh, start to expose and provide interoperability 
of the network capabilities and how they are uh, integrated um, east of westbound uh, through interconnection or federation in what we're doing from exposing uh, capabilities and one way to actually deploy and service uh, the applications. And then lastly, the OPI, OPI, OP API group um, is looking at basically how do we then expose that up to the developer communities and enterprise communities. But as an operator association, we realize we cannot do that alone um, because we can only talk a certain language. And as we get into the wider community of it and and how the IT industry is also converging very much on the networks, uh, the mobile and the fixed uh, telecommunications businesses. It makes sense that we've actually pulled together with the likes of uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, the Global Telco API Association and with Linux to create Chimera, which is really trying to actually establish where uh, APIs and capabilities can actually be adopted by the wider ecosystem so everyone's using off the same standard and really drive that market push and adoption of APIs. So thank you very much. So hopefully that sets up the discussion for us as well, Arpit. I'll hand back to you now and stop sharing my screen. Thank you, Henry. And I believe, uh, yeah, okay. All right, there we go. Awesome. That was a great introduction. Uh, you know, even though we claim that we know NGMN and GSMA forever, there's always something new we learn about the progress. So really exciting time. So uh, let's, uh, and again, for the attendees, please ask questions to the, to the experts here in, in your Q&A box and we will, we will answer them as they come in. Um, I have a couple of sort of first questions to, to make sure that you know, we are setting the context here. One of the asks from the community was to speed up uh, open source standards, whether it's standards or specifications. And I think there is a difference between the rigidity and the default kind of let's just do it this way type, right? Um, how, how have you seen in the last couple of years, the evolution and the speed of how the ecosystem wants to work on these uh, specifications or standards as, as we want to call it, uh, as we go through the 5G deployment and revolution, right? And, and as you know, the context of this is cloud, cloud service providers, enterprises, and telecom, they all need to work together in this new era, right? So and Anita, if you want to start off, mm -hmm. and I know, you know, it starts off with disaggregation, obviously, but, uh, you know, how do you see the overall progress in the industry um, as these ecosystems come together? Yeah, yeah I mean, we, we as NJMN, we work on the requirements level, and um, of course, we, we um, consolidate and sub submit the requirements to the industry and we cooperate with all different type of cooperation partners, so including the classical um, standards development organizations, including GSMA, but also including now uh, the Linux uh, Foundation and um, the Oran Alliance and, and, and alike. And I think the ecosystem is growing and this yet alone shows um, that um, we need, of course, to also find new ways of work and new uh, corporations here um, in finding the right channels and submitting requirements. We are not producing a code by ourselves. Yeah? But for instance, an example would be now um, with the foundation of the Kamara Alliance. Um, developers, of course, we need, we need to balance between the speed of innovation and at the same time to, uh, to have a reliable, uh, let's say, de facto standard also when it comes to open source. And I think for developers, it is important to develop funds and use it uh, multiple times. And um, looking at the example of the Kamara Alliance, so maybe you will explain it a, a bit more in detail. Um, um, it will be important for our operating disaggregated networks projects. So uh, with regards to um, requirements, so it will have impact on the way operators monitor, integrate and test um, and operate the, the networks. And we will uh, provide requirements uh, to the Kamara Alliance. Of course, it is not a mandatory requirement, but um, um, it is a requirement submitted by um, yeah, um, um, 
a large number of, of, of operators and um, other ecosystem members we have in NGMN working on, on those topics. And I think it's always a matter of the balance between speed and at the same time um, submit uh, reliability and um, um, a specific form of still having standards um, to, to have certainty for the developers that they don't need to develop uh, um, a specific code for each of their uh, customers. Awesome. And and Henry, you want to you want to walk us through the whole you know Kamara setup and how quickly it came about and you know how how, how you know specifications and code are being handled. Uh, just as an example, because you know I think uh, Anita is right. This is a perfect example of how foundations and organizations and alliances come together and and help the end user. Right in this case, operators. Yeah. Uh, just check. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, great. Uh, my video is just frozen at my end, so if I, if I, if I, if I don't move at all, don't worry about it. I can stand still <laughs> alive. Um, yeah, for sure. And just the first thing I want to say is uh, it's been a pleasure working with the Linux Foundation, NGMN, um, also TM Forum. I think one of the most important things we've got to actually stop is duplication of activities. And we need to focus uh, all the attention of what everyone's doing through one vehicle. And Kamara came about, I think, only since October last year, October 2022, uh, where Deutsche Telekom was very keen to actually bring together operators, bring the ecosystem and the players in the ecosystem together um, so that the uh, telco APIs can be um, exposed. Um, they're looking at capabilities that you might not think about at this point in time, like uh, uh, on-demand quality of service APIs which is very important in things like uh, edge compute and also network slicing and being able to provide the resources to the developers. And really when we actually look at it, it's very difficult for the operator community to actually talk to the developers and because we talk different languages. And that's where the Linux Foundation has been absolutely critical in being able to actually be able to parse almost through uh, what we actually need um, from our capability in networks, because don't forget there's 600, 750 networks behind us. Um, you want one way to talk to those networks. You don't want 750 ways to talk to those networks when you're a developer looking for uh, some resource in a particular market, a particular region. Um, maybe with a particular operator, you, that's irrelevant to you about, you know, do I go with Vodafone? Do I go with Deutsche? You know, who do I go with? You know, you just want resources in Berlin or you want resources in London or you want resources, you know, in particular places to get the improvement. And, and, and really, we, we have put the fundamentals together uh, where we can contribute the code. Um, software is how everything's going to be built. And that gets built at such a pace these days that we have to respect that that code needs to be actually utilized in, in a particular way. And the most difficult aspect, I'll be honest, was the IPR regime that you actually put around this. You know, where, where, where is that? That actually went through a vote to, across the whole thing. And we've decided on Apache 2 licensing. So it's clear, very transparent for when developers are actually using the APIs and things like that, that they can be comforted and they can be secured by they know uh, the, 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 the IPR regime and, and what they're doing and how they actually do it. I think that all speeds up. It, it moves the hurdles. It moves the barriers. Yeah. just speeds up the implementation. Awesome. And I think that's exactly the, the goal of these kind of activities and collaboration. You know, if a standard or a specification exists, code it. If it does not exist, you know, code it and push it upstream. Or if it doesn't exist, work together so that you have that quick feedback loop. So very good. Uh, I know there are questions. I think the first one on the requirements was answered. There is also, um, you know, how uh, th there's other questions coming in. I know we're going to sort of quickly run out of time, wish we had more, but any, any closing statements on this whole philosophy? Um, uh, you know, I'll start off with, uh, with you, uh, Henry, this time. I'll just re reiterate, if we can, if we can stop any duplication out there and we all work together, it's going to be so much quicker. Um, and and, and our, we want the developers and the enterprises to be happy at the end of the day. Oh, well said. <laughs> Anita? Yeah, nothing more to add. I think <laughs> collaboration is really key here. Yeah, and I know we didn't get a chance to talk about green networks today, but uh, you know that has been a hot topic. 
uh, of how the telecommunications industry can enable you know, other verticals. So you know, please download the information on NGMN and green networks and we will have a, a lot more deeper sessions because uh, that's a big topic coming up uh, in 2022. So with that said, thank you very much, uh, Henry and Anita, for joining um, and really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.